We were just talking amongst ourselves before we keyed the microphone here to join you about uh, tipping and how once in a while we tip heavy, especially if we just see a situation. And all of us uh, on the show, because of what we do in the travel and all, and the fact that we like restaurants, uh, are in restaurants a lot. And um, I think if you're going to heavy tip because you either the service was fantastic or you had a good day in the stock market or you found uh, you know $50 in your pants or whatever it is, you have to do the tip and walk away fast and not expect any kind of a positive reaction from the server. Um, not that long ago, I've had two experiences. Not that long ago, I, I tipped like 50% because this person just looked like she was having a bad day. And it, it was one of those tips where keep the change. And I, so I think the bill was like $25, something like that. And I had a $50 bill and I said, keep the change. And she just took it and walked away. And I went, hmm, that is not the reaction I thought I'd be getting. And then I thought to myself, you need to be more like Max. It, it, it doesn't matter what she did you did the right thing in your head at that moment. So from, from that point on, I'm just going to leave it and get out because the person's reaction has nothing to do with my action, right? Well, you oh, give yeah. the gift. A, a gift is something we give with no expectation of exactly. receiving anything in return. That's why we call it a gift. And so if the point of the gift is to get praise and glorification, then it wasn't a gift. Right? It wasn't a gift. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that, that, yeah. that's where I'm going uh, with that from now on. I mean, I don't do it all the time. Nobody, very few people can do it all the time. Although I'm always interested in these really rich actors. I can't pull one out of the sky right now who leave 100%, I think Tom Hanks does this, and it would be Hanks, leaves like 100% tip with, with every meal. Now, it was just in the paper the other day, Slash, somewhere close by, you know what I'm talking about, Slash, the guitar player? Yeah, the, gu the guitarist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, guitarist. He had uh, dinner, or had breakfast or lunch, whatever, at a Waffle House, not far from here, somewhere in this area, because I saw it in the paper, and uh, he left a $200 tip at the Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to yeah. be a first. Yeah, that's got to be a first. You, you wouldn't recognize him. That somebody took a picture of him. You wouldn't recognize him. He didn't have the hat on or the glasses. You know, he was just well. Slash know. looks like he should be cooking at the Waffle House, <laughs> not leaving two hundred dollar tips. Well, and that's probably what the lady thought too. But He's going to need a hairnet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I, just, I, am so, fun, I, I am funny about if, if I'm going to bless somebody, my, my wife and I, we, we talk about it all the time. If, we, if we're getting good service and, and the waitress just, we don't know what the deal is, but she's working and she's working hard and, you know, we don't know what she's got going on. But for whatever reason, one of us will feel like we need to, to, to bless her with something and we'll do some, you know, we'll do a, a large, you know, gratuity or whatever. But the first thing I do is I make sure I fold it up. And I put a couple of ones on the outside and I hand it to her personally as we leave because, and I hate to be this way, I don't know who's cleaning that table. And, I, you know, I don't yeah. know. I want to know yeah. that I'm giving the person I want to have something. And so we wait till we get ready to leave. And if she walks by, I just say, thank you so much. We just hand it to her and, and go out the door because I don't want it to look like I, I'm not handing her like with big bill money or nothing like that. I just put a couple of ones on the outside and just hand it to her and leave then i know she's got it and hope no hope, i do hope that too works well hope i do works that too well, so. i think i think that's a great idea so tell me tell me what you think about this situation i had somebody uh do some work at the house and it was hard work and it was hot and it was miserable and it took forever because it was a rainy summer obviously and uh it just took forever and he sort of finished, but left a lot of wood just all over the place and left uh, <laughs> old paint cans and everything. And I went out because 
Mary and I were going to be away for like a week and a half. And I said, so it looks like you're finishing up. And he said, yeah, I'm going to clean up everything here and it's going to be fine. And I said, what's the matter? Because he seemed down. And he said, I got to go to court tomorrow for a DUI that is two years old. And I think I'm not going to be able to drive. And he said, and the guy who does my billing, he's kind of an accountant, uh, said that I owe $30,000 to the IRS. So I am not having a good day. And I went, oh, wow, man. And I went inside and I got a check. And I wrote him a check for not a Cadillac, but a car payment. And I said, this will get you some Ubers. And he texted me back and he said, I just don't know what to say. You know, thank you so much. So that was great. He didn't have to do that. I got back a week and a half later and the place was still a mess. He just left and didn't clean up. So what do you um, think? <laughs> don't I you think, think that we, we don't know what what other people are struggling with and that was mm -hmm. uncool and unprofessional but I, I mean i just who knows it's bob and sherry i just could not be friends with a guy who appears on a dating show on why? tv what an adventure what? like what a lark that would be why would you not why would you not be able to hang with that <laughs> be because i think that they lie and i think they make up uh, how they feel, and it sounds so stupid, and they all sound the same. Like, I walked into our TV area last night. Mary was on her phone, but on the uh, screen of the TV, she wasn't really watching it, but it was on, is a show called um, Love is Blind. And so I guess the concept is there are two people, and they are interacting like they're on first dates or, or, or the, the beginning of, of a relationship, but they can't see each other. So the whole thing about, you know, whether you're attracted to somebody physically is eliminated and you just talk about, you know, who you are and your feelings. And I don't watch these shows, but I've, I've seen enough of them to be able to say that I, I don't think I could be friends with a guy that would appear on these shows because this is what they all say. This is what the guy was saying. And I didn't write it down, but I'll just riff on it. I just want to meet someone who understands me and can accept the love that I have to bring. People don't realize when they see me that um, I'm holding back love because I've not found the right person. And the love that I have is so strong that it's bursting to get out. And I just, I just hope that uh, Sarah is the person to receive my love because my, I'm sorry, I can't even get my, it's a, it's an inti it's intense, it's intense so, for me as a man. Huh? Like if a guy, if I'm sitting at the Applebee's and a guy leans across the table and says, I just, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to receive my love. I am coming through the bathroom window to, to get an Uber and escape. <laughs> like, so it's a little bit intense for me, but that doesn't mean I couldn't be friends with that guy. No, right? no, no. Lamar, seriously, if one of your friends goes on and says what I just said on TV, Max, are you, can you be friends with that guy? Really? Um, listen, I can be friends with him, but I'm going to razz the hell out of him. Is oh, what I'm gonna yes. do. <laughs> you just exactly, Max. You just took the words right out of my mouth. He don't want to be around. No, it's not that I couldn't be friends with him. He couldn't be friends with me because I yeah. would open up every conversation with something. That I would be quoting his his stuff right back to yes. him over lunch. This is, this is yes. what you would do. You'd be, you'd be saying stuff like, Jim, I hope you can receive what I'm about to give you. <laughs> We're watching the game at my house on Sunday, and I hope that you're available oh. for that and, and not feeling too vulnerable oh. to come over and watch give the Packers. A, give me a glimpse. Yeah. Give me a glimpse. As we're having lunch here, just show me, just give me a glimpse of that love that's inside of you that you've been holding back all these <laughs> years. <laughs> Lamar, sometimes, sometimes I can feel my heart beating like it's trying to jump out of my chest because... It knows the love that I want to give 
to the right person. I or it could be that chili. It could be that chili. Yeah. No. <laughs> I think you shouldn't eat dinner so late. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Those guys, oh, man, they, they all sound the same. Sarah, I have this rose, and I wanted to give you this rose, but the feeling of my passion, which I want to express to someone, <laughs> Although it started with you, it, it can't end with you. I must continue my journey to be able to. I can't even do it. They're so full of crap, these guys. I don't watch Love Is Blind. I have friends who do. I don't. I don't watch that one. Um, I'm. I'm interested in. I'm gonna watch some of the naked dating show that's coming on oh. HBO or Max. I. Not because I would ever participate in it, but because sometimes what I see on Naked and Afraid makes me laugh so hard. Oh, yeah. Um, well, like this guy, is going, like, I, if, if this is on HBO, the only thing, I never heard about this until you mentioned this to me the other day. On HBO, you can show anything at all. On Naked yeah. and Afraid, you know, it's cable. Uh, yeah. On HBO, you can show anything at all. So I think they're going to be cut down if they get cutesy wootsy like they do with Naked and Afraid, with the blurring or the, the camera angles. This, I guess, the two of them are completely naked, right? So I'm going to say this, and, and um, I say this as a, a cishet woman. Y'all look real silly naked, um, unless, and even then. So sure. I don't, I, if I were a man, I would not go on the HBO naked dating show because the first time you stand there with your hands on your hips and tell me that you need to be in a relationship with someone who's ready to be vulnerable, I'm going to be on the, I'm going to cry laugh. <laughs> it's the stuff we wouldn't, couldn't, shouldn't do on the regular show. The Oddcast. Oddcast on the free Bob and Sherry app. You can join us on the show by calling, if you want to go old school, 844-52-SHERRY. S-H-E-R-I, or you can get the Bob and Sherry app wherever you get your apps. There's a little microphone there. Hit it and record, and Max will put it on the air. Here we go. Hey, Bob and Sherry. I was just listening to the podcast about tattoos. That reminded me when I was married, my wife got her very first tattoo. It was on the back of her hand between the thumb and the finger, and it's a replica of what the lead singer Metallica has because that's her favorite band in the world, and she loves them, and we've seen them in concert. And I look at her, I'm like, oh, that's great. Oh, so cool. Then she turns her hand a little bit and shows me on her wedding ring finger. She has our anniversary tattooed there. Now, I don't know what my face looked like, but I thought to myself, oh, no. Well, that's not a good idea. And I said, oh, wow. And it's not very surprising because the first time after two months of dating, she told me that she loved me. And my response was, oh, wow. <laughs> well, if you had to guess, we're not married anymore. I was afraid it was going that way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, that, um, hey, that tattooing on the wedding uh, finger, that wouldn't oh, work for you oh, and oh. me. You only have so many fingers, you know what I and mean? And they're not, but so big. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, there's something that's so jinxy about that kind of tattoo that you just have to be so very careful. Names, you do. And dates, and pictures, and portraits. There are people walking amongst us that have tattoo portraits of an ex, like big ones. Mm. I've seen it on Reddit. Like, oh... Oh, geez. And then to get it removed, and it never Forget really removes that. 100%, you know, that's that's difficult. I guess you could go over the top and do yeah, another. Could up. you do that? Another tattoo yeah, on top up. of yeah. his yeah, face? Yeah. <clears throat> years ago, years ago, Carl and I were, uh, actually, we were playing golf. And we had met a, another couple at the golf course to play. And so the guy, they hadn't got married yet. They were, they were, they were dating and, and I guess they were engaged to be married. And he pulls up his shirt sleeve and shows me this big tattoo of her name on his arm. And I said, well, that's just, that's gorgeous. I mean, that's just, that's wonderful. It's great. It looks awesome. It's great. So 
we we hit the ball, we tee off, and of course we're terrible golfers, so the balls go everywhere. So me and Carly get in the cart and we're driving over to the thing as soon as we get in the cart. And Carly says, What are you thinking? I said, six months at the most. Oh my God. They <laughs> never I mean, they didn't even make it six months. I mean <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> no. Oh you just my can't God. do it. It's the yeah. kiss of death. You cannot do it. I'm sorry. It's jinxy. Yeah. It it's is. just one of those things. I don't understand why, but it's just one of those things. It just so adds let me, another piece of pressure. Another piece of pressure. <laughs> let let me ask you this. I think it was Pam Stone, our friend Pam Stone, who posted this. If it was not Pam, I apologize, Pam, for crediting you, but I think it was. And she said, and Mary, Mary kind of agrees with this. If uh, if it's a uh, renewal of vows, it's the prelude to divorce. Sometimes, sometimes yes, you so get that vibe. I mean, I've known a lot of people that um, made it to a big, big anniversary. And when I say big anniversary, I don't mean year five. That's big for me. I mean year <laughs> fifty. That's big for y'all. Uh -huh. And those people do. Although Kevin and I have what anniversary? We are. We just had our tenth anniversary in August. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You're yeah. bragging now. You're bragging. Well. Well, ever since I put that titanium lock on his kennel, he hasn't been able to go anywhere. <laughs> but I, I think that depending, depending on it, it all depends on the couple, you know, the vow renewal thing. If you've been married three years and you're review, renewing your vows, <laughs> you caught him, you caught him on an OnlyFans account and you're trying yeah. to save it. Yeah. 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 So you think, you think if it's under how many years for a renewal of vows? 20? Mm, no, because times I think it are needs to be a, now. I think ten or fifteen. Be, yeah, but like if somebody does it on a twenty fifth anniversary, that's just yeah. a that's just it's a, a thing party. to remember. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. A, it's you're good to go. You're you're good to yeah, go. I think yeah, at that point. Yeah. yeah. How about ten? How about ten? Ten. <laughs> you know, like I. <laughs> Here's the thing with 10. The reason that I'm hesitating on, on 10 is because I, I said to my husband, um, you know, when we hit our, this was a few years ago, when we hit our 10th anniversary, we should renew our vows. And he said, I don't agree with that. And that was the end of that. And so, 